Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. We have 3 to the power x plus 4 to the power x minus 6 to the power x equals 1. And we're going to be solving for x values. What else could we solve for, right? So, where does this problem come from? Maybe you recognized it. This problem is actually from Romania, because Romania has a number of beautiful problems, Olympiads, you know, bunch of different books that I have in Romanian, but I try to understand, you know, as much as possible. But anyways, it's full of beautiful problems and they're very, very strong in math Olympiads. Anyways, let's get started. So we have a very interesting exponential equation, three to the X plus four to the X minus six to the power X is equal to one. And we're trying to solve for X values. Now, if we didn't have the six to the X, like let's say we had something like this, then we could probably divide both sides by four to the power X and look at this, or maybe change this to a two. And you've probably noticed that X equals zero will work because one plus one is equal to two. But how do you show that there are no other solutions or if there are any other solutions, how do you find them, right? So that would be kind of fairly easy to do. And we've done similar problems before, but this one is more interesting in my opinion, because we have three different bases. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use substitution and the substitution is actually very, very powerful. And you're gonna see how it can be used here. So we're gonna go ahead and set two to the power X equal to A and three to the power X equal to B. You may be considering, you may be thinking like, there's no two to the power x in the equation. There is, but not in that form, in a different form. So, and the reason we use three to the x and two to the x is because their product is gonna give us six to the x. Does that make sense? So based on this, we could go ahead and write three to the x is equal to b, we already know that. And four to the x can actually be written as two to the power x squared, which is a squared. And six to the x is two to the x times three to the x, which is a b. So we got everything we need. Let's go ahead and substitute, replace three to the X with B, two to the X squared or four to the X with A squared, six to the X with AB, and we get the following equation. Now, at this point, what should we do? We wanna factor this because if you wanna solve an equation like this with many bases, obviously you wanna get a simpler method, right? So let's go ahead and write it this way a squared minus ab and then plus the b and then bring the one over subtract and you'll get zero now this is kind of tempting right i mean factor out an a we get a minus b and then you can only factor out one b minus one uh oh there are no common factors so this is not good what should we do instead we should group differently you see there's a lot of tricks in this problem which is why i really like this problem and there are more many other exponential equations. This is actually a book on, I think, uh, Probleme de Algebra. I don't know how, you, how to pronounce it, but it's basically algebra problems. So a beautiful, beautiful collection. And anyways, if I can find the author or just the link, maybe I can share with you. Uh, if anybody from Romania, just holler, uh, let us know in the comment section down below. So, we're gonna group differently and we're going to associate this term with this term because you don't really have a lot of options. A squared and B don't go well together. So that's your only option left. So I'm gonna put these two together and then uh, these two guys, maybe I can just write it like this equal to zero. Now notice that A squared minus B can be factored into A plus one and A minus one by using difference of two squares, which is a super important formula. I think there are very two important formulas in math. One of them is difference of two squares. The other one is the Pythagorean theorem. There's many others, but I think these two are super important. Anyways, these two terms have a common factor of B, but depending on how you factor out the B, you could have different terms. So should we take out plus B or a minus B? If you take out a plus B, you're gonna end up with one minus A, which is not the same as this, it's the opposite. So that kind of tells you, okay, I think I should take out minus B so that I can get A minus one again. Now, A minus one is a common factor, awesome. We can factor that out 
and the other factor is going to be formed by these two, a plus 1 minus b, and the whole thing is equal to 0. Beautiful. Now, we have two factors that are much, much easier to solve for. Now, first of all, from here we get a equals 1, but you got to remember a is 2 to the power x. So we're going to replace a with 2 to the power x equals 1, and this is going to give us x equals 0. By the way, if you're looking for real solutions, then this would be the case. But towards the end, I will talk about complex possibilities. What about the other one? The other one, if you set it equal to 0, you get something like this. a plus 1 equals b. And that gives you the following. After substitution or back substitution, 2 to the x plus 1 is equal to 3 to the power x. You may know the solution to this equation, but you know what is more important? To find all the solutions as well as proving that there are no more solutions. Make sense? So in that regard, we're going to go ahead and divide everything by 3 to the power x. And that's going to be awesome because this is going to give us 2 over 3 to the x plus 1 over 3 to the x equals 1. What do you know? 2 thirds plus 1 third is equal to 1, right? So x equals 1 is a solution. Guess what? It's the only solution. You know why? Because if you set f of x equal to 2 over 3 to the x plus 1 over 3 to the x, you're going to realize that f of x is the sum of two decreasing functions. Therefore, it is always decreasing. What that means is you're going to have a single solution. You have a decreasing function. It can only be intersected once by a horizontal line. Make sense? Therefore, there's only one solution, and that's x equals, x equals 1. But we already had x equals 0, which means we should have two solutions. But are there any other solutions? I don't think so, right? Now, we're going to do two things. First, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the graph, and then we'll discuss complex solutions. So stick around. Now, the graph is actually pretty interesting. For a function like this, you might make a guess. What is it going to look like? And the graph of this function looks like this. 3 to the x plus 4 to the x minus 6 to the x. So it kind of has that exponential flavor. And then it all of a sudden, it turns and starts decreasing. Why? Because of the value of 6 to the x, right? Or is it because of that? Well, exactly because it's being subtracted. Normally, as x approaches infinity, 6 to the x would approach infinity. But you're subtracting, so you're taking away more and more, which brings the graph down more and more. Make sense? That's why we have this interesting shape. And as you can see, we have two intersection points. Awesome. Let's go ahead and talk about something else now, which is what I promised at the beginning complex solutions. So are there any complex solutions? Good question. I'm going to just take 2 to the power x equals 1 and show you what that might look like. First of all, by using the uh, identity, uh, we can write this as e to the power x ln 2 because e to the ln 2 is equal to 2. And then 1 in the complex word can be written as e to the power 2 pi n i, where n is an integer and i is the square root of negative 1. And now from here, we immediately get x ln 2 is equal to 2 pi n i. And now by division, we get x equals 2 pi n i divided by ln 2. Of course, this is an imaginary number. For, so if n is equal to 0, then we get x equals 0, which we already had. If n is equal to 1, then we get x equals 2 pi i divided by ln 2. So you basically evaluate 2 pi, which is about 6.28, and then you find ln 2 which I think should be less than 1, and then 0 point something, and then you would multiply the by. So something multiplied by i, an imaginary number. And that will be one of the complex solutions. Of course, there are infinitely many, and you can just go ahead and find them, but this would be the most general representation. By the way, if you like complex numbers, go ahead and check out my other channel, A plus BI, where I focus on complex numbers. I also made lecture videos. So... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out A plus B I. And bye-bye.